Hello and how do you do? My name is Jordan Hoyt and this is my presentation on wind farm wake steering exploration during grid curtailment. A major problem being addressed by researchers in the wind community is wake effects in a wind farm. When a wind turbine takes energy out of the wind, it can reduce wind speed for downstream turbines, therefore decreasing total power of the wind farm. Damaging loads can also occur as a result of being partially waked. Now, before analyzing how turbines can work together to reduce the effects of wakes, I will first describe how turbines operate as individuals. Individual turbine control objectives typically follow a four region power curve. Depending on the incoming wind speed as given on the x-axis here, the turbine aims to generate a certain amount of power as given on the y-axis. When there's not enough wind to spin the turbine, it is in region one. Here, the turbine pitches its blades to 90 degrees to feather the blades. The turbine enters region two once wind speed reaches the cut-in wind speed. In region two, the turbine has enough wind to, to spin and therefore generates power. It pitches its blades to zero degrees facing towards the wind in order to catch as much wind power as possible. Once the turbine reaches its rated speed, it enters region three. In this region, the blade pitch is buried in order to not exceed the maximum power the turbine is rated to generate. Generating more power than the rated power may, may damage the generator or other parts of the turbine. On rare occasions, the wind speeds will reach the cutout wind speed where the turbine shut off in order to minimize damage from harsh winds. The NRL 5 megawatt reference wind turbine is a fictional wind turbine used in simulations for this research. It's likely the most common turbine for wake steering research, and its rated power is 5 megawatts, as the name suggests, with the other details as shown in this slide. Wake steering mostly takes place in or around region 2, since it's the only region where a change in wind speed can result in more power. Essentially, the derivative with respect to wind speed is zero in all other regions. And as a result, the following wake steering analysis takes place in region two wind speeds. This presentation focuses entirely on yaw-based wake steering due to its potential for widespread use. Nearly all utility scale turbines in existence are capable of yawing to an offset angle of gamma to deflect wake as seen here. This method of steering a wake away from downstream turbines has shown potential for increasing the total farm power production in spite of decreasing the upstream turbine's power output. Other wake steering methods not mentioned in, the, in this presentation may still be utilized, may still utilize concepts described in this research. It's not always that simple, however, because model uncertainty and sensor uncertainty make wake steering not as beneficial as it could be. Model uncertainty, basically, describes how models always make assumptions about the complex behavior of wind and often don't include topography uh, in the wind farm that impact waves. And sensor uncertainty is the noisy or biased wind vanes that make it difficult to determine exactly in which direction the wind is coming from. Uh, this can be summarized in that model uncertainty makes it hard to predict what the absolute optimal uh, yaw angle is, gamma star, and then since their uncertainty makes it hard to physically reach the predicted yaw angle since you don't know exactly what direction the wind is coming in from. And this is expressed in this illustration. Um, we see that this turbine is yawing at an angle of uh, gamma one, attempting to steer the wake around the downstream turbine, and it thinks the wind is coming through at this angle straight across when maybe the actual wind direction is coming slightly lower in degrees. So then this turbine is actually deflecting the wave directly into the downstream turbine. So this just illustrates how the risks of wake steering when you actually have a lot of uncertainty. Now you could use physical experiments to, to find the actual best yaw angle, gamma one by exploring to every yaw angle state and measuring each turbine's power output, 
this would make it easier to find the absolute yaw, the best yaw angle. Uh, there are reasons why you wouldn't want to do this, though, which I'll describe in further slides. But first, since I was not given a pair of $2 million wind turbines to run real physical experiments on, I need to take a detour right now to describe the model I used in place of physical experiments. I use the Fast Farm uh, Wake Simulator, Wind Farm Simulator, as developed by the National Wind Technology Center. And this software runs the open fast software for each individual turbine in the farm using blade, uh, blade element momentum theory to calculate forces, power, and loads. And then the, the farm wind model portion of fast farm takes ambient wind as an input here, and then calculates weight deficits, and then outputs wind velocities for the three dimensional space of the wind farm. Here in my research, I used a smooth eight meter per second hub height uh, wind input uh, that's shown by this horizontal slice at the top right. The model calculates the weight deficit uh, based on turbine operation and then makes this deficit meander. Meandering is determined by if there are any eddies of size two di diameters in the input wind profile, but since this is a, a smooth eddyless input wind profile, no meandering is observed in this output wind field as shown at the bottom right. So it was using Fast Farm that was that this simple two power line wind farm was simulated as shown. Uh, the upstream turbines yaw angle is varied to find the angle that maximizes the total farm power. Now, as I mentioned before, there are downsides of physical experimentation. Uh, the inherent risk to this is that uh, you might generate less power and there might be more stresses on turbine one and turbine two than if you were just normally operating with wind turbines. But this brings us to grid curtailment, which is a possible way to mitigate some of those risks of physical exploration. Typical grid operation requires the supply of electricity from power plants to meet the demand uh, in the grid, as shown here by these light bulbs on. But on occasion, um, sometimes demand decreases, as shown here. A wind turbine can pitch its blades to catch less wind and therefore decrease the power produces, which is one of many possible ways for grid power plants to meet the demand or reduce the supply to meet this demand. And this is typically a rare occurrence in most countries, but will likely become more common as our grids become more dependent on the cycles of the sun and wind. This sort of brings me to the main question of my thesis. Can these grid curtailment periods be utilized to study the unique wind flows of each farm? Basically during curtailment, the optimal wind the optimal yaw angle for wake steering could be found and applied to these uncurtailed periods, which it, uh, encapsulate the more common operation of wind farms. So what do these experiments look like and how do they decrease the risks that I showed earlier? So basically the wind farm starts out with normal operation where zero degree pitch is being used, it's region two wind speeds. And then uh, an order comes in to curtail the second turbine. It starts pitching its blades, decreasing the amount of wind it captures and, and therefore decreases the, the desired wattage, decreases the wattage of the wind farm to the desired wattage. Then lastly, the upstream turbine explores yaw angles while the downstream turbine continues varying its pitch to keep farm power at the desired wattage. In this scenario, the, um, the risk of less power being generated is no longer a risk because you're operating in curtailment periods where the turbines are already ordered to work less efficiently. So there's no harm if the upstream turbine explores to a less efficient yaw angle. And then since the downstream turbine is pitching its blades to catch less wind, it experiences less stress as well. 
But how do the measurements taken during the contaminant exper exploration experiment determine the optimal yaw angle for uncurtailed operation? The measured experiment is denoted by this ruler at the top, uh, and it's mostly the same as this uncurtailed scenario we're trying to predict. The upstream turbine is the same whether the farm is curtailed or uncurtailed, and the weight profile is the same whether curtailed or uncurtailed. So this is an important thing to note. The only thing we don't really know is uh, the operation of the uncurtailed downstream turbine. We have measured the, the curtailed downstream turbine though. So th that's for the next few steps, we'll be finding how we convert these measured outputs into this estimation prediction. The unknown uncurtailed downstream tower can be estimated though uh, by estimating power in the wind and the efficiency of the turbine, a prediction for uncurtailed power can be found. So this efficiency is typically denoted by the power coefficient, which is uh, a a function of blade pitch angle beta and the turbine's to speed ratio of lambda. But first, let's find this power in the wind. Since it's the power of the wind is the same for the curtailed experiment, uh, we should be able, if we can predict it in the curtailed experiment, it'll be the same as the uncurtailed. Wind power is expressed as one half air density rho times swept area A times the cube of wind speed U. There are sensors on the turbine nacelle that directly measure wind speed, but their measurements are often inaccurate since the blades are directly influencing wind speeds. It can be more accurate to estimate wind speeds by measuring what the turbine actually feels via torque. This is called the rotor effective wind speed. Rotor effective wind speeds can be found simply by expanding the power equation as shown here. Uh, wind power equation substitutes in for the power of wind. And the tip speed ratio is expressed as the tip speed Ts divided by the wind speed u. Looking at, at this equation, wind speed is the only unknown, assuming there is a known CP table for the turbine that relates beta and lambda to the power coefficient. And then from here, you could numerically solve by simply increasing the wind speed value until this equation is satisfied. So that found the power in the wind. Now we're going to find uh, power coefficient CP. The in-rail five megawatt wind turbines, optimal blade pitch angle, uh, zero degrees, and tip speed ratio are known quantities from its CP table. This gives a, an efficiency of about 48%. However, it's difficult to theoretically achieve this maximum efficiency due to tracking errors preventing you from getting this optimal lambda. But in three slides for now, I'll show you why how CP max can be calculated in other ways based on normal operation data. So now we found both the power in the wind and the efficiency of this turbine. So now we can actually try to solve this equation and predict this uncurtailed turbine to power production. And this is done first by running this curtailment experiment. Turbine 2's power is measured at each upstream yaw angle as shown in the green dots. And the actual uh, uncurtailed scenario is marked by these red circles. And the predictions are the black X's. And you can see we get pretty close here. Um, but predictions are a little bit hair off. But we can use this first circle as a known quantity, because this circle occurs when turbine one is at a zero degree yaw angle. And this state often occurs during regular wind farm operation. So we can use this point to calibrate our data by adjusting the CP max value until this first prediction matches the actual value. And that's what we do here. And we see it's a, a more, a better fit. Now, turbine two's prediction sums with turbine one's measure power to produce a total farm power prediction that matches closely with the actual values. Here, a yaw angle of 14 degrees is predicted to produce the most power when 16 degrees is the actual optimal value. 
So the overall findings are crude curtailment periods offer viable experimentation time for wake steering with reduced financial and mechanical risks. And these likely don't require any additional sensors or actuators for most utility scale wind turbines to make this happen. Some future work, if I have time here, is uh, looking at Region 3 exploration, since Region 3 is a time where explored yaw states, where you, where you can explore the yaw states and the turbines are already intentionally running less efficiently. Analyzing loads will be important to establish the economic value of this method. And uh, as we look at, most farms are larger than just two turbines. So uh, given specific curtailment demands, wind speeds and wind directions, different curtailment methods could be applied to increase exploration time. So I'd just like to give a quick thank you to Pete Seiler and so many of the NREL and NWTC researchers that, that made this simulation software possible. Windesco is my current employer and uh, a wind energy performance optimization company that made it so easy for me to continue um, finishing up my master's work here while also starting my career there. And also the AC3 organizers who organize this conference and the National Science Foundation GRFP fellowship program uh, were all instrumental in making this happen. So, uh, thank you so much. I should be present in the crowd at the time that you're watching this. So let me know if you have any questions.